case. Anyhow, then it does that. Subscribe around that. That's my plan, and I'm sticking to it. He's got to carve that out and smooth. There we go. You are watching Riverbend Longbows Outdoors. Hey folks, Ray here, Riverbend Longbows Outdoors, and I decided to put in some uh, truck bed drawers and possibly an extension for sleeping in here. This is only a five foot bed, so it's, I'm 6'1", so I'm not very comfortable, but uh, I don't know how much of this I'll do step by step. I'll probably just kind of show you the highlights and uh, yeah, we'll get her done. Hang in there. As the majority of you know, uh, bow making isn't my sole job that I do. I'm also a carpenter. So over the years I've accumulated numerous cover sheets for cabinet material and whatnot. So I've got like, I'll have like no material in this out of pocket. This is all just over the years adding up. So try to make it as light as possible. I'm using some laminate. This is a kind of a wood grain. I'll be putting that for a base. And uh, I've got some plywood for drawers because plywood's a lot lighter than the laminate uh, fiberboard or MDO. So, or MDF. And uh, try to make it as light as possible, but very, very sturdy. So, kind of just shooting by the hip. I have absolutely no written plans for this, just kind of going right out of my head. So, I'll probably just show you the recap at the end of what I did, but a little bit of in the process of. So, here we go. All right, so basically I'm just cutting my uh, pieces for my box and uh, that'll get me up to my height. If you can see here on these Tacomas, there's a spot for plywood to rest. You can actually just put two by sixes in and throw a piece in there, you're done. Throw some cheap drawers in there or whatever. So build needs the height, which needs to be nine and a quarter. To clear this off the top of the bed. So this plus this plus a three quarter will bring me right to that height so that's what we're doing yeah and if the safety police out there thinks they need to pipe in just keep it to yourself i've been doing this for almost 30 years so i got it got a center line marked underneath there we go, where are we getting there? Next. Pretty basic carpentry really. Kind of like building the bread box back in high school. I'm using quarter inch narrow crown staples. Inch and a half. You can screw it too though. I'm gonna press for time so we're just getting her done. Ow. Swing and miss. It happens. All right, so there's the basic box that'll slide in. Now I'm going to put uh, three quarter strips across to beef it up. And then the final piece of plywood once this is installed, and then I can build my drawers that slide right in here. And this is just high enough, it'll clear the tailgate so pretty basic um, yeah I couldn't really do a material list because this is all stuff I've accumulated so Whew. anyway let's get it well I just realized this is too heavy for me to manhandle and get in the truck by myself <laughs> so I'm gonna have to back the truck into it and slide it in <laughs> that. Let's 
see now it fits right in there. I just need to add some three quarter strips and then a piece on top. So now I can cut my top to go in there. It'll come to here and then I'll have a short piece. And I haven't figured out how I want to do the extension though yet. Might do that with some slide outs here on the sides and another piece that goes on top. So we'll get there. All right, well I got the two front sheets in. I got a jigsaw out just a little bit for those little cubby pockets and then it'll sit down flat and fit nice and tight so then we'll do a filler strip here i think i'm going to do some extension rails here then i can put an adder uh, add a sheet so it makes it long enough to sleep on and then i'm going to get one of those uh topper tents that come out and cover the tailgate that's the plan there we go I got it all laid out and pre-drilled all my holes so the dust and stuff's not in here. So I'm going to screw it down and fit this piece in. Might have to do it tomorrow. I'm running out of time today. She's plenty beefy. I feel that. That's good. screwed down all right now I'm gonna cut a template out of cardboard this size so I can scribe where it goes around the, the edges over here and then I can fold it in half cut it out and uh, transfer it onto a piece of material Okay, so now all you need is a piece of cardboard half of the width. You slide it to where it, when it touches, right here. So now this is the gap I have. So set my uh, protractor to that width. And I can scribe around that. Follow that around. And there we go. So I'm going to just cut that out and see how it fits and then transfer it onto a piece of material. right there. I'll just cut some of that off real quick. Slides right in. Perfect. There we go. So now I just transfer that onto my piece I'll cut for here. Here I'll show you. See it's got a little dog leg and then a taper in and then back so that should match up over here. We'll see. You flip it over upside down. Yep. Good to go. Dead center. All right. Here's my pattern. Lay it on there. Trace that out. I'll be using a jigsaw where the teeth cut downward on this laminate so I don't have a chip out. Otherwise you can flip it over and cut it from below or the opposite side and then it won't blow out the top. That's what we're doing.
see if we can get it in there in one piece. I don't know. Be some finagling going on. Hmm. I don't know, folks. Looks nippy. Oh boy. Yeah, that's you. Bam. Alright, there we go. Nice clean, tight enough fit. I'm gonna edge this with some vinyl tape I have. It's covered and uh, that'd be part two tomorrow. This is a vinyl edge banding. It's, this one's from Fast Cap, but it'll cover that raw edge. And uh, I just have it because I do cabinets, so that's why I have it. But you can find it. Cabinet accessory stores are online. You just kind of center it, it's got a self adhesive on it. Lowe's maybe might have something like this. I don't know. All right, cut it plenty long. There we go. And I got a tool that cuts it off flush. Just a pressure roller. This is the tool. You can get these at Menards too, and it squeezes on the plywood, and it has two little razors on each side. Cuts it off flush. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Nice finished edge. Eh. Whole free drill. Little countersink. How'd I do this? Shabam! Good morning, day two. Now it's time to build the drawers, and I've been thinking of it about it overnight, trying to st uh, keep it simple still. So uh, it's gonna be pretty basic. Did pick up some uh, some of these flush ring tools for the drawer fronts, and then so really that's the only thing I purchased so far for the system itself. But then I did go ahead and pick up a little collapsible stove, which I was going to get anyway, and then another collapsible sink that I could put in on the kitchen side of the drawer system. So, so I got to do a little math, get these uh, drawers figured out, and I'll share what I can when I can. And like I said, I'm kind of crunching for time here, so I can't do a full blown out how-to video on this, but at least to give you a general idea, maybe point you in the right direction of what you would like to do with your truck. So. Stay tuned, here we go. So first thing I think what I'm gonna do is uh, basically just build the boxes themselves, the drawers, and then cut and modify as I need to, to how I want to uh, utilize the uh, stove and stuff. And uh, yeah, we're just still kind of shooting from the hip here. I got a lot on my mind and I'm running out of time. <laughs> All right, so I went ahead and ripped these seven and a half inches and the box height is eight, but I'll put a, put a stop in the back so it doesn't come all the way out on accident. So now I'm going to figure out how I want to mount my bottoms, whether I'm going to dado in or what. So stay tuned. Well, I decided to dado the bottom in basically cutting a trough in the sides and ends and then the uh, bottom will slip into there like a tongue and groove. Makes it a lot stronger. So I've got a 
set of blades that I can put on to cut that trough out. That's what he's going to do. Alright, I've got my slots dadoed. I'll show you what I mean there. A little channel that will accept the, the uh, bottom. But uh, what I did is I went ahead and widened the trough out just a bit. It gets extremely humid here and who knows where we'll travel to. So it gives it a little room for expansion, contraction, humidity, all that stuff. Actually all the working parts, the sliding in and stuff. I kind of uh, undercut everything just so it has room to swell so it doesn't get jammed in there. Nothing worse than getting to where you're going to go camping. You can't even get to any of your stuff. So That's my plan and I'm sticking to it. These gets to be a little more precise than skill saw. <laughs> Alright. So now I have two of these extra pieces left over, and what I can do is rip it down right here, and it'll be the exact inside height that I need, and I can use those for uh, I'll have four dividers once I decide how I want to do that. And all of this is really possible with just your basic skill saw or radial saw. Um, just use your tape, double check your measurements, and use straight edges and some clamps. And uh, yeah, you can do this whole thing with just one saw. All right, I'm going to double check my measurements before I get carried away. And then uh, I'll be using the uh, narrow crown staper for this part bit of wood glue and then they'll be solid. Hold that thought time out. I'm going to add some of that vinyl tape to all the edges so all the edges are sealed and then that will give the bottom uh, nice and slick to slide in and out and I don't have to use any mechanical slides or drawer slides. So, Okay I'm going to do that first. You just cut them a little bit long and you can trim the ends flush. Once you roll them on, a little time consuming, but will be worth it in the end. Have nice smooth edges. Two, four, six. This is a flush cut trimmer, but you can just use scissors. It's just a second. This is just a tool for this type of work. And it cuts it nice and flush. You got a flush cutter. Oh, I need a vise. Anyhow, then it does that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do that to the rest of them. Get back with you in a bit. I just put a little bit of glue on there. I'm just using the tight bond. We'll get this squared up and tacked. And make sure you're good and flush. I'm using the narrow crown staples again. Staples hold the best in plywood. We'll do the other end. Just a little bead. much now we'll try to get this into our box without tearing it apart sometimes it's easier to do with two people okay there we go we're sliding and there get the bottom in could be tricky this stuff's a little bit warped Years. Come on, baby. There we go. So now it just fits right in that dado joint, so it's all locked in. And there's a little bit of clearance on the bottom, and then it'll slide on these vinyl rails once we've got it all done. So now I gotta just put the top on, nail it together, 
And I might just use a uh, <clears throat> hot glue to hold it together instead of fasteners. Put a little glue. Don't take much, just enough to tack it together. And leave this loose so it can float during weather changes. That's why I'm thinking about using hot glue because it'll give and take more than a fastener will. Now we just work that on. Work our way down. Sometimes it can be tricky. It can be tricky. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah, she's worked. All right, I'll get back to you. I'm getting closer. Oh. There we go, like a big puzzle. Oh yeah, she'll be good. There we go, drawer number one. Looks good. Something. It was just catching on this bottom lip. So. All right. Then I can put flush front doors on there, and this will be part of the support, the drawers will for this extension. I'm thinking. Cool. All right. I decided to use hot glue, so just make sure the sides are all the same. I have to put a clamp on it, but we're good. Do the corners and then go about now every five inches or so. Just put a little bead. That's a high temp structural glue. So she should hold it together and let it float as needed. Cordless, isn't that cool? And once I decide where I want my dividers, that'll squeeze it into and hold it together as well. So, all right, rock and roll. I got the drawers in, and I just figured out my drawer fronts. Getting those finished up, and then we'll get those on. But uh, just so you know, for even being experienced, this is running into about a 10 hour project altogether. So be prepared. <laughs> of course, you don't have to do everything I'm doing, but might as well while I got it, eh? <laughs> Here's my front. Now I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna hold it where it needs to go so I can mark it and screw it on from the back side. And then we'll put these flush front poles right here. So give me a minute. All right, I figured out I'm gonna be an inch and three eighths at the top of here so I marked the line or marked it. So I marked the line across. And I can pull the drawer out and clamp that to that line and then screw it on. It'll be very precise. And center off of the center style there. Alright. 
pull that out. Toy fit. Bring that up, clamp to it. That'd be tricky. I have to get a wedge. Give me. All right, so I'm just shimming it up a little bit, take the weight off of it. I made this so this will rest on the tailgate and it'll be the support for this extension. That's the plan. Anyway. Action. Still on our line. Good. length of screws so you don't go through the front. <laughs> that happens. All right. So I left myself room with the drawer. Get over it. And yeah. I like it. Now to get the other one in. use a hole saw drill to make a big hole right on using a two and a half inch hole saw bit for this baby there we go we can go all the way through on the front because we already have the back then all I have to do is carve out for that top part what a mess. Got my template it tells me where to carve out for the hinge part. I'll show you in just a second. So now I just gotta carve that out. Both of them. We'll use the old Sonic Crafter for that. We should be able to just be able to pop that out. Like a glove. Love it. 
called the Vix bit. It self centers the screws and your holes. Makes life a lot easier. There we go. Functional. Awesome. All right, so then I'll make an extension, a 16 inch extension board here, and that'll bring this to about 80 inches. So it'll be about the size of a queen size bed. I think I got it in my brain how I'm gonna do that, so. All right, day three, I added the uh, bed extension, and it's 16 inches, and it's held up by a cleat that's screwed to this board. It just rests on the drawers and then the front on the on the drawer fronts. And uh, now I got about an 80 inch bed. Pretty slick, rounded the edges. Nice and smooth. There we go. So when it's not in use, this can flip around and that edge can catch on the front and then all nice and tight. One other thing I did do is I added some carpet. It's just Velcroed in place. It was some I had left over, so I can take it out if I need to. And uh, put a shelf in here, or a divider, to keep this immobile. And uh, But I'm gonna call it quits on this video, folks. I'm gonna get stuff ready. It's supposed to be on the road pretty soon. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helps, and uh, it's pretty fun. Of course, I'll be sharing as I add stuff to it, doing something different. I'm going to build a water reservoir and a few other things before summer really kicks in. So I uh, hope you enjoy this. Hope it helps. I know it wasn't really a how-to video, just kind of showing what I did, but uh, it's fun. <laughs> Stay tuned for more, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Last minute edition cup holders. Drink will never fall off the tailgate again. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't. Like and share this and we'll see you next time. But I'm going to call it quits on this video. Oh boy. Camera's all